Can it, can it be underneath the monitor? We gotta stop and start. All right, but before you get to hear the band, your player's gonna stop, hit play again because this is a live video stream. One second. All right. Now, from Tustin, California, half past gone. Is it ready? <laughs>
couple more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. How long do how long are we supposed to play? Hey Frank, they're asking how long are they supposed to play? S. A. Oh, as. L. Long. As. You. Want. Let's play a couple more. Let's play a couple more. May. Yeah, we're good. Alright, um, well, as soon as your voice is going to go out, it's going to go out. Can you maybe get two more? Yeah, let's do taking the sink, let's do box and then taking the sinker out. Box? Hold on one oh, second. Sorry. What is Frank saying? Maybe what? Four? B? Oh, you don't have that effect, huh? Yeah, well. Let's do it. Rough it out or? Yeah, we're rough it out. Rough it out.
Hold let's, on, hold get, let's get fast and play it. singers prior to him and uh, they really didn't fit up to the caliber of our music they just didn't mesh with our style as much as Chris did so we were really stoked to bring him in and, uh, it's worked out ever since. How so does he M E S S mesh? How does he mesh with with you? I would I'd say really good. The mesh yeah. is really good. He's uh he's definitely he's from like the same area that we all grew up, so you know, as far as just like being into the same kind of stuff, he's in the same stuff. Uh musically he has kind of the same musical taste that we do. Um yeah, he meshes very well. Good job, Chris. Plus uh <laughs> Chris and I used to play in a band together for I don't know, it was three years or so, but <laughs> we won't say the name. No, we played a band called Distress. That was oh, a punk did band. It. I did it. <laughs> did it. And uh, I know he he played guitar at first, and then he played bass, and I played oh. drums the whole time. But and then we went on to this project.
and P L looks like H A R V Harvey Harvey K Kaitel. Harvey Kaitel. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn it up some more. I'm not sure how loud it will start acting weird. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you heard them saying they played it, played there last night. Yeah. In. What? City, C, Club. Oh, it's uh, the Showcase Theater in Corona. Mm -hmm. All ages venue. They do a lot of punk and metal and mm -hmm. other kind of music gigs mm -hmm. there. Can, how, why, do, you. S T A stay stay um, where in that area? Why do you stay in living in that area? <laughs> uh, <laughs> family. It's all about the weather. Actually, we live more on the Orange County side, but we're all in that area a lot. But yeah, good weather. Good weather. Good weather. Hot girls. <laughs> and hot I heard you say family. Yeah, family. Oh, yeah, family. yeah that's all where all family. families are. Yeah, that's where all the families that and it's are. just home. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was born place. there. I've, I've lived. I think I lived like somewhere else for maybe a couple years of my life. For the most part, I've always lived in the Orange County area. Mm -hmm. We definitely like Berkeley. Yeah, Oakland, San Francisco. Great area. It's great. Yeah. Great people. Good food. Mm. But they like this area I'm still too. <laughs> <laughs> The L A last P U punk band no P U N punk we had on the show is oh running for um, city council. Was in Berkeley. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, wow. he was just on last week. He was. Um, he's been involved in running Gilman Street for since I think he said '89 or something like wow. that. Wow. And um, but Frank gave him a hard time because he's thinking he's got to clean up his image to run. He should really use the whole punk thing because that's what he's got. That's what he did. That you know, everybody knows Gilman Street. Yeah, everybody yeah, knows yeah, yeah, the yeah, world. Spot, yeah. 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 He's run it, and it's and it's done well. And he was saying that people aren't going to, if they want a regular politician, they're not going to vote for him. Yeah. And oh, what yeah. he's got is the whole punk thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's got the community behind him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he thinks there's not a large enough punk market, punk constituency. <laughs> and G I Gilman has W. O R work works. That's the other thing Frank pointed out to him that he's been running Gilman Street and Gilman works and the city doesn't work. Yeah. And so he, he could use as one of his strong points is that I know how to make something work and and he can apply himself to the city and he can make the city work. But he didn't quite um, he didn't quite get how that connected since the city was mm. a punk club. But, um, mm. so. Well, yeah, he's got a good point, though. I mean, like, he has the youth involved. I mean, the punk rock community, I mean, if they get out and, like, they go vote, you know, and uh, make their voice heard, he's definitely got, uh, I would say, a strong movement mm. behind him. Because yes. punk rock is definitely something that's uh, very strongly rooted. And uh, I think Gilman's a great place, mm. and I'm sure he'll continue to work. Hopefully, we wish him the best of luck.
if he runs. You know, yeah, so. and, and Frank was also pointing out that you don't have to be a punk to appreciate like a punk sensibility. No, not at all. And that, you. you know, that he shouldn't think that it's just punks that are going to vote for him. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> How do you S E C G Gilman Street? Mm. How do you guys see Gilman Street? It's a pretty nice looking street, but we actually, we haven't been in there. I mean, he means the yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I was about to say, I was about, I was about to get to that. Oh, okay. Nice looking street, first time we've ever been here. Yeah. We're going to check out the club tomorrow. I mean, that's half the reason we came up here to do this is tomorrow during, uh, we're going to scope out different places to play so we can come back up here for a weekend. and. We should give you the contact for um, chemos, too, in San Francisco. Any contact is, we could use it all, that's you know. That's we play all the time, too. But, okay, so what do you, like, um, from what you know about Gilman Street, what are your um, opinions are about it? Um, there's been a lot of good bands to play there. I mean, from what, you know, like anybody who's played down there and drawn a crowd has played up here from what I hear, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like bands like Naked Aggression and mm -hmm. Rancid and Green Day, like, they all started playing that club, mm -hmm. so, you know. So it's like, it's had a lot of good bands. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, it yeah, has a huge name. It's like the whiskey of Berkeley, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you know? the whiskey, of, the whiskey of go go of the yeah. Bay Area. It's I, like I, I legendary, uh, almost, especially yeah. from uh, from uh, our age period growing up. We all mm -hmm. dreamed of you know coming up here and playing. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's yeah. like the first club that comes to mind when you think of playing the Bay Area would be mm -hmm. Oak Gilman Street. You know, it's just yeah. it's like one of those things. Like, I don't know. I'm just gonna shut up now. <laughs> 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 I'm choking on my own here. Time. It's not yeah. good. <laughs> I am P L playing W with the Oh, with the feeders. So you, do you know who the feeders are? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm not familiar with that name. Yeah, they were. Um, yeah. They were um, real popular in the '80s, and then they split up. And they were they. They made the National Enquirer a lot. They were really? like a mm -hmm. hardcore punk band. The lead singer was Frank Discussion. And um, he would do things like show up for the gig with dead animals around his neck. Oh, um, no, a cat and a dog. Mm -hmm. Kind of like <laughs> a or something. In, in fact, Frank um, ha had a cameo the, the night he played at Gilman Street and showed up with a dead cat and dog around <laughs> his neck. Frank was part of the show that night. What do you guys find the dead dogs? <laughs> well, see, this was the whole thing, because he knew everybody was going to freak out and give him a hard time. Mm. And so his point, he ended up having the audience come up on stage and say their piece. Mm. And his point was that people shouldn't just knee-jerk react, mm. they should think about it. Like, he knew he was going to push their buttons, mm. and sure enough, he did. Yeah. And he said, think about it, do you think I went out and killed these animals to put them around my neck? And he went, he went to the SPCA and got mm -hmm. them legally after they had already died naturally. And he said, but nobody like thinks mm -hmm. about that. And yeah, so that was yeah. you know, what he was trying to yeah. communicate. Is there a certain time period that you, I mean, because I figured to put a dog, dead He's dog around your neck, before it gets stiff, it'd have to be like, be able to like wrap around, so that'd be pretty fresh, huh? Yeah, it was <laughs> pretty yeah, yeah, had them hanging from something. They were, like, they were hang, as I recall, they were like stringed or something around. On the way up here, uh, we saw like two dead dogs on the side of the road, side, side, side of the freeway. five, and like this one was like stiff or something because his leg was like sticking up in his air, in the air, or maybe it was broken and stuck that way. <laughs> 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 That's just what brings all this to mind. You guys say dead dog, we're thinking we saw dead dogs on the way here. <laughs> he, T, H. He ended up throwing them out into the audience mm. too uh, at one point during the <laughs> session. <laughs> Swinging them, you know, they were all and, and fly, they went flying through the room. Um, Start a new metal band called nice. Carcass. There is a metal band called Carcass. Oh, um, well, I figured it, it would have been used. A. B. A. B. The baby. 
The Baby mm -hmm. Punks, Freaked Out, F, <laughs> uh, F E, Fell, Fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all re everybody got pretty freaked and um, righteous about it. Mm. Yeah. Or a lot of people did. Yeah. Mm. We have mm. that. Oh, that video is on our website. Mm. If you, if you want to watch the dead Check that out. <laughs> 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 get back home and get on the computer lap to scope that out. I know, Mikey, yeah. right, where is it in the intimate theater? Is that um, one? yeah. Yeah. Why are you P U N punks? Why are you punk? Well, it's more of a mentality than an image or anything, you know, you kind of like, you think for yourself, that's the main part of punk to me, mm. I mean, yeah. whether your political views are straight and, and narrow or somewhere in the middle or off one way, you know, you know, you know what I mean, like, there's you different, as yeah, there's different aspects to it, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, but basically it's doing what you feel is right for you, mm. and what you want to do, what you want to be in life. Yeah. That's the way I that's the way I take fun guys and having fun mm -hmm. as you go along. That's right. What do you want to do? Want to want to be when you grow up? Well, I'd like to play I'd like to keep playing music. I just think everyone else would like to do that. If yeah. that works yeah. out, I mean that would be really cool, but you know, you know, it's not an easy feel to try to you know. I wanna be a rock star. Yeah, it's <laughs> not yeah, it's not an easy uh, business to try to you know, make a career out of. So, I mean I don't know, I've never I don't know, see I'm behind everyone else, I haven't thought of anything to fall back on. I mean, pretty much we're all gonna go for this. We wanna make this our life because we just all love music so much and we love like playing for people and just the whole thing but I mean we all kind of have our own like little backup plan you know just in case something doesn't work out later on in the future well except for me but go ahead. Well, except, for, <laughs> except for Chris of course but for the most part right now we have a uh, we have a lot of our focus and a lot of our time and our energy is going into this and it's going to continue to be that way for hopefully many years to come so. is it a b u S I a business? Well, um, I would say it's not a business, really. Mm -hmm. As in, if you're asking if we make money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's just we a lot. No, it's not a business, but if you look at business as <laughs> like stuff you have to get done just to make shit run properly, then yeah, it would be a business. You know, like there's things you have to get done for things to go right. It doesn't always, well, most, most of the time we don't get any money. If we do get money, it's very little. Like, not it's going usually, to back yeah, it's usually going have. back into merchandise or like <laughs> debts we have, or <laughs> you know, may, maybe to get some gas, uh, uh, maybe food. I don't know, but we've never really made anything yeah. off a plan. I mean, it's more for ourselves mm. that we do it, and for the people that want to listen to it. Mm. I have been doing this for 30 mm. years and um, and never made any money so even after 30 years there's still no money we still we still you know supported ourselves mm -hmm. okay. it is a a d an addiction mm. Definitely. I agree. Mm. Definitely. The stage and the music's definitely yeah. the people and you know, they pretty it's much all your friends and new friends mm. that come out to see you and like yeah, it becomes a response. It's a great feeling. It's like you know, it's like a, a natural drug per se, you know. Yeah. It's a natural high. Mm. I'd have to say the addiction is listening to tunes, you know, like buying more CDs and once you get sick of it, you well, know. Well I have that addiction too. It's not it's not helping your music fix anymore, you gotta go buy a new C D. Yeah, know? so you like so I'll burn stuff. Well, on a different subject, I'll, I'll burn stuff, but I only use it if I'm gonna buy it. So, like, I do feel like 
you know, if artists are, are, are going to make any money, they should. I mean, I, I'm all for free music, but I think, you know, like, if you, if you like the artist, you like buy, the, their, yeah. buy their CD. You, like you know, don't just steal the CD. You know, if you <laughs> just steal the CD, eventually buy it. So, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, so, so the people that you, you you seem to like so much are actually, you know, getting a little something for it. Because, you know, record companies aren't cutting the, the, the performers the best mm. deals at all. So, I mean, they're probably getting, what, a dollar a CD? So, I mean... Most. But you can't beat CDRs because it's a free fix. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a free. <laughs> if that, Emma, <coughs> you, if that much. Oh, what he said. The yeah, yeah, if that a much. Yeah, yeah. CD, yeah if that much. Well, there's a lot of good labels. A lot of good like in, or indie labels are helping out their bands a little bit better now than they were back in the day. Mm. Like there's a lot of. M. Oh, most fans on Lover, on L, A, on labels, don't get anything, F, R, from the label, no, from R E C recording, Re recording, records. 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 records, yeah, yeah, that's that's a yeah, good point. I've watched frankly, frankly, much. definitely. Um, yeah, it depends on the contract, you I know. You can get jacked really yeah. fast mm. signing the wrong signing the wrong line. Gotta be yeah. careful out there. Actually, Maybe from what I hear, I think MC Hammer got one of the best contracts mm -hmm. before. Because uh, they were trying to offer him something. This is just what I hear. I was watching on some VH1 show. <laughs> but I uh, guess MC, MC Hammer was apparently just like, I could, I could make more money than you're offering me selling these tapes out of the back of my car. Mm. You know, MC Hammer wasn't, you know, he was just trying to make money. So they, they obviously cut him a better deal than they would someone just trying to get a deal. Mm. But That's right. I don't even know why I'm talking about MC <laughs> Hammer. MC right Hammer. Now, so. We don't even know we're talking about <laughs> signing mm. anything. We've never been signed. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we're still doing it ourselves so it's, it's we all, just hope we don't get it's, jacked it's all a shot in the dark for us like <laughs> just from what we hear from our friends that are in bands that are signed or just from random people that know know a little bit more about it than we do it's a lot of the time like the bands don't get anything from the record sales or it's usually just the live performances and which is good if you can draw a lot of people but if you're you know a struggling band to draw some fans and it's not always that good so. yeah most of the time you're paying them <laughs> How do you P A pay for your addiction? Um, <laughs> we all have days. We all we all work. We all have day jobs. Yeah, we all have day jobs. Day jobs. <laughs> we plan on quitting. They all have day jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? kind of day jobs do you have? You first. Okay, well I work at um, a group home facility for developmentally disabled people in Costa Mesa. Mm. I'm like the staff and it's, it's it's an alternative to which Fairview, which is a state hospital, like mm. it's more people that are like going out in the community and doing their own thing and being more independent, which is really good because they, they do learn things. And, you know, they, they're a lot smarter than everyone gives them credit for and it's, it's just awesome to work with people like that because you know, you get your attachments and all this, and like, it is just, it's a fun job. Yeah. We, oh. we have, we need that, we need them, mm -hmm. the developmentally disabled. We, Frank always says we need them in our society. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep us all healthy. Yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, what about, oh, yeah. as far as our jobs, um, yeah. I wait tables at a restaurant called Red Robin. You've probably heard of it. Uh, <laughs> it's a restaurant in Southern California. It's pretty good. Um, and I do like construction work on the side too. So, so, yeah. mm. uh, what kind of F 
food do they sell? Oh, mainly hamburgers. It's pretty much a hamburger joint, but we have all types of stuff. Like gourmet hamburgers. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed gourmet to be the world's hamburger. best. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, gourmet. Yeah. Yeah. World's that, best gourmet hamburger. That's that's what they say. That's our. Get you in and out and clean. It's more like yes. a mall. Yeah. Burgers yeah. are very good at Red Robin. They're good. I like pitching Red Robin right now. It's, it's, a, it's, a like, <laughs> it's your run of the mill. Yeah. Shopping mall burger. Definitely. Jump, if, burger if you're in Irvine or Orange County, go to Red Robin. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> and tip you yeah. tip? Nah, he's <laughs> he just wants a tip. Alright. So, um, me? Yeah. Uh, I own a trucking business with my dad. My dad and I drive, uh, team drive a diesel truck and we do like, you know, we haul these spas called free flow spas. And we go from like here to the Bay Area and then we do other runs too where we go to Las Vegas and back. Like I went to Las Vegas twice this week and there's been weeks where I've been to like Las Vegas three times in three days, you know, or whatever, you know, it's just a lot of driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A. Mm -hmm. Ah. You. Mm -hmm. Are. The. You are the driver. You are the D. Er. You. Drummer. Yes, mm -hmm. he's the drummer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> S. Mm -hmm. O. So, of, so of course, you are the D driver. Yes. Yeah. That's funny. I was just going to say, I knew that Jeff was a talented truck driver, but we never realized the importance of his skills until this trip because we have a trailer that I don't think any of us besides Jeff were capable to drive. We would have ended up crashing. Long time ago. <laughs> so we're really stoked for that. Yeah. Dang. Very no nice problem. trailer, too. Gave no us ideas. Yeah. Oh, we just got it. Oh. We'll, we'll pitch Apache Trailers. <laughs> <laughs> Montana. Yeah, look, okay, <laughs> Enough of the name, man. Carrying gear is an issue for us. We, oh. have, we have pickup trucks that we use. Yeah, see, we did pickup trucks, but that doesn't save your stuff from getting mm -hmm. messed up in the rain or ripped off. Well. And you all have, you have to have like multiple pickup trucks, but right, this you have to have right. one pickup truck. Right. You know, so yeah. it's and it's all locked up, not gonna get rained on. You could back it against a building. <laughs> what about parking? That's the other thing we have. Like when we yeah. take it go down to LA. Yeah. Well, for instance, our trailer is sitting on your sidewalk. <laughs> so, I mean, and you know, the explorers, the exploder, that's what we call it, the exploder, <laughs> Ford Exploder is parked next to it. So parking is, is a mm -hmm. bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, parking is a bitch. You may, you can, S, E, E, you can see, we have, been, doing, this, for a long time. Uh, these are the kinds of things we notice. As soon as you pull up, hey, check out that uh, trailer. <laughs> we're looking to see how much stuff has fallen out of it and thinking, okay, that's a good sign. That would work. Yeah. And not S L E E P sleeping does W literally like four cars when the freeway let out off the bridge pulling people over like four busy cars cop cars like pulling people over so it's Memorial Day weekend you know
Yeah, yeah I learned it out earlier today and I was like, I don't know if they came home. <laughs> it turns out, like, my roommate drove it to a bar, got really drunk, and then took a cab to some other bar. So when he finally got back to me, he'd been drinking, and he was like, oh yeah, your car is on 16th in Alabama. <laughs> I was like, thanks. You had to walk there? And I took a cab. Oh, okay. Cabs are pretty cheap. It was Probably. like six bucks. It's pretty cheap to go. Like, and it's easy because you don't have to park usually when you get cabs. It's so worth it. Mm -hmm. So, is uh, San Francisco going off right now? As in, really, like really bad. Yeah, a lot of people partying in there. Um, I suppose because of the weekend. Yeah. But I was at this fucking barbecue all day long with a bunch of drunk old rockers. Oh, uh, okay. In Berkeley. <laughs> I've never come to Berkeley. <laughs> and right. that's where fucking dude was. San Francisco. No, I'm so no stoked to be here. First time. Had a blast. This weekend was oh, fucking crazy, let me tell you. It was off the hook. So, anyways, we're gonna go do some sightseeing. It's me, Aaron, and Jeff. Billy, Katie, and Chris are on the way home. Um, if I could sum up the weekend in two words, it would be sick and weird. That's three words. Fuck, we'll say sick and weird. Because it was a trip at some point. You'll hear about that later. So right now we're going to go scope out some bridges. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. We're going to see if maybe we can find some like hookers or something. No, I'm just kidding. Find some hot women. Hot women are always nice to find. And uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, see you back at the Golden Gate. Or one of these bridges up here. All right. Peace.